And now I'd like to introduce Kendall. Kendall is the Director of National Retail Sales for Rogers, Kendall Milne Bancroft, and she is going to introduce our amazing next presenter. Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I had the pleasure of being part of the, uh, the panel that we did this morning, and it was so great to hear so many passionate people about women in technology, and this next speaker is no exception. So we've all told stories about meeting people before they were famous. You know, you knew Mike Myers before he made it. You saw Justin Trudeau when he was walking with his father before he became our premier. A few years from now, you are definitely gonna be able to tell that story of Rhea. Uh, Karamanchi at the Women's Luncheon in IT. I saw her there first, that's what you'll be able to say. <laughs> While she may only be 14, it's clear that the grade 9 student is going somewhere. Considering the young woman's passion for technology and ent entrepreneurship, her riveting presentation style, which we're about to see, uh, it's no wonder that she recently received the One to Watch Award at the business competition held by the Economic Club of Canada. Rhea learned the fundamentals of coding circuits, business and entrepreneurship through the not-for-profit Zero to Startup program. And she is now involved with two startup ventures, one pushing the introduction of smart street lights in the city of Toronto, and the second, the creation of a smart cane that serves the mobility device for the visually impaired. Later in the program, we're gonna hear from a Dragon's Den veteran that we'll be introduced to later. Um, but I'm confident that you'll be impressed by Rhea's presentation and might even wanna get in on the ground floor. Certainly anyone in HR is probably gonna to wanna to slip her a business card after you hear what she has to say. <laughs> There's a lot of, that's a lot of pressure to put on somebody who's still two years away from being able to drive. Uh, but if you saw the, trans, uh, the presentation at the Digital Transformation Awards, you'd know that she's up for the task. So please give a warm round of applause for Ria. Thank you. Everyone. My name is Rhea and I'm a grade 9 student and I'm excited to present to you my new innovation, the Smart Cane, a modern device for orientation and mobility for the blind and deafblind community. So, in Canada alone, there are over 458,000 people who suffer from visual impairments with or without hearing impairments. I've always wondered how the blind and deafblind community deal with the enormous challenges they face. So I want you to meet Rachel. Rachel, along with the rest of the visually impaired population, rely on the same age-old cane that was never updated to take advantage of new technologies. With this cane, it detects most obstacles on the ground. However, what happens if there's an obstacle above the ground hanging from knee to head level? The user is likely to bump into it and they can get severely injured. Rachel herself ran into the back of a parked truck and got a severe head injury. She's also dependent on others for directions when traveling on unfamiliar routes. I wanted to see how we could use advances in technology to come up with a solution to help Rachel and the rest of the visually impaired and deafblind population live more independently. So the school science fair presented an opportunity to do so. With a partner, I created a prototype of a smart cane. We won at our school fair and advanced to BASEF, the regional science fair, where we won multiple awards. So our initial solution was creating a smart shoe for the visually impaired. It would detect objects in front of the user and would vibrate to let them know when something obstructs their path. And it would also be integrated with a Maps app on their mobile phone to help direct them where to go, let's say left, right, or forward, using varying vibrations. However, with this approach, if the technology were to fail to work, we would, putting, we would be putting their lives at risk. So this led us to refine our idea and come up with our current solution. The technology would be incorporated into a cane itself. This would provide the same benefits as the previous approach, but would also address the dangers. So after that, I wanted to take the project further. I attended the Hacking Health Hamilton Hackathon. There, I formed a team of eight of industry professionals, and we further improved the project. 
We later then pitched to a group of venture capitalists and we won the People's Choice Award and I received an internship at Medic, a software development lab focused on e-health solutions. I'm currently there for the summer trying to get the smart cane into the market. So though we can communicate some information, use some navigational information using vibrations, <laughs> we're limited to the amount of information we can provide. So to address this issue, we could incorporate Braille onto the handle of the cane itself. Currently, there's a company called DOT and the CNIB who are working on devices that include changeable Braille. Hopefully, we can work with them to introduce this feature onto our device. So some of our current features that I'm working on are an emergency button that can be added to the handle so when users press it, uh, it'll automatically transmit their location details, personal information, medical history with emergency personnel. And there's also optional sharing of location details with family members, caregivers, or interveners. So uh, let's take a look at our business model. So we would either do a B2B where we would partner with an existing CNIB store, which is the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, or, and we would assume 90 to 100% of the sales in 2020 with decreased contributions later on. Um, our next option is to do a B2C, which is business to consumer, and we would sell our product through an online storefront such as Amazon or through our own. Uh, however, this requires brand awareness developed through social media, conference presence, a uh, website, or a Kickstarter. And $5 per cane also goes to support IMAC, which is eyesight testing for children in Hamilton schools. So uh, looking at our financial sustainability, given the, same, given the cane selling price of $55 and the cost for production $30, we, ex we expect to make $25 per cane. Acknowledging the fact that only 5% of individuals in our target population use a white cane, uh, we assume to make 10% market penetration in year one, which will increase to 30% by year five. And assuming that the cane has a lifespan of four to five years, we expect a steady state revenue upwards of 700,000 per year, acknowledging the fact that we'd be selling the cane in Canada, the United States, and Europe. I apologize as uh, the slideshow is a little distorted as when it was converted into a PowerPoint. So um, looking at a competitive landscape, the smart cane is very unique. Um, it's much better than the white cane, a vibrating clip, and a GPS for the visually impaired. The GPS for the visually impaired is highly expensive at around $3,500. And it is not a standalone solution, does not provide short range detection, and only provides GPS functionalities. Uh, the vibrating clip for the visually impaired is $350, it's not a standalone solution, only provides cheap short range detection, and no other value added features. The smart cane, however, is very cheap at around $55. It is a standalone solution, provides short range detection, uh, GPS functionalities, and numerous other value added features. So some of our next steps for 2017 and 2018 are to meet with more people in the blind and deafblind community, uh, create a website and blog, and acquire more funding for the project, work with Medic and others to get this product into the market and create an improved working prototype, patent our invention, and also refine our technology and test it. So what we need are mentors and coaches in fields of technology, marketing, business, and entrepreneurship, and also funding for technology, a patent, a video about the product, and some business aspects. So the smart cane will greatly revolutionize the way that the visually impaired, blind, and deaf blind live on a day-to-day -day basis and it will positively change the way they live and it'll really improve their lives. So I'd really like to thank my wonderful team from Hacking Health and Mr. Paul Brown who provided me the internship at Medic and also these other organizations for helping me get to where I am today. It's a little delayed. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Uh, do you guys have any questions?
you. How much money do you need? <laughs> Um, for patenting and creating a prototype and everything, it's going to be around $15,000. And um, for filing the patent, it'll be another $5,000. Uh, the patent firm that I'm in touch with, it's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they're going to do everything in terms of uh, marketing to uh, creating the product. And they're charging $15,000 plus uh, filing fees. So in total, about $20,000. I've always been interested in how the visually impaired and deafblind people live on a day-to-day -day basis and my interest sort of sparked more when, uh, when I was at home at my friend's house. Uh, her grandma came and she was visually impaired and I saw um, how she struggled to uh, get around and I also saw more people uh, around the streets when just like on my day-to-day -day life how uh, I really wanted to make their lives better. So um, at my school science fair, I went with that same friend and we created a prototype of the smart cane and it was more than just a science fair project to me. So I really wanted to take it forward and uh, turn it into a company. So, does anybody else have any questions? <coughs> Yeah, so um, currently when I did the competitive landscape, uh, there's the GPS for the visually impaired, a uh, regular vibrating clip. And um, currently uh, there's a group of students at a university in India who are creating a prototype of a smart cane. However, it just provides a short range detection, just like the vibrating clip. So currently our product is the only one like ours in the market. And um, I really look forward to working on it and bring it to life. So here's a prototype of the smart cane. It looks a little bulkier as uh, the technology can definitely be shrunken. But so far what we have is it's incorporated with a GPS on mobile phones and provides short range detection. So if I were to um, put this in front of that, it would vibrate. Um, I can just turn it on. And uh, it's vibrating right now. So. Yeah, I'd love to show it to you guys after, but thank you so much. Wow. Ria will be here till uh, the end of the event. Her mother is also here. And in the uh, workshop that we just finished this morning, there was uh, one of the participants who said, you know, we talk a lot we should be doing more. And this is our opportunity to do more. So uh, if you are interested in getting in on the ground level, if you're interested in helping uh, raise funds to get you to the next stage, or just helping her as a coach, this is our opportunity. So I hope that we all do something about it. Thank you.